Guess what else I've had time to do? Yeah, go on. I so amidst all the packing, I found time to go to the cinema three times, and I've been watching a bunch of stuff on Netflix. Sounds like you haven't been packing. Well, I have, but how how much stuff other than the DVDs? Yeah, which are your bullshit anyway, so you have to pack them. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. How much other stuff have you been packing? Like, have you been doing your fair share? Have you been packing 50% of the stuff Cat has been? Cat doesn't have that much stuff. No, I'm talking about your the your stuff, all your stuff that's shared. Oh, like the kitchen equipment and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cat's handling that. Right, there we go. That's what I wanted to know. So Liam is just packing Liam's stuff and Cat is moving all the essential shit they need. But to be fair, right, if you put like all of Cat's stuff that's hers and all of our shared stuff together... It's still in total is probably only about like fifty percent of just my stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's as sympathetic as you think it is, because that's your stuff. Yeah, that's your own fault. Yeah. We did. You know, I've got that Negan statue. Yeah. We packed that away, and we broke a finger off one of the zombies, so we've got to fix that, which was devastating um... because that was like super expensive. Yeah. That's not good. No, I don't know how to fix it. I super imagine it's like a yeah, but. And then you just fi- file down any excess that like comes over. But then it's going to have to be repainted, isn't it? If you file it, if you're very careful with it. I mean, it probably only if it's only a finger. No one's going to fucking notice, mate. That's my plan. I'm thinking of selling it. In a way How often? Do. I've come to your house so many times, and I can honestly tell you, I've never like gone to one of your like models or stuff that you've got yeah. and just analysed every inch of it, being like, "Oh, I wonder if this one's a broken one." So no one's going to so, fucking know. You know, I've got my Walking Dead shrine. Yeah. I'm really tempted to start selling it off. Like, I know Dan is a big fan of it, but it's just a dust magnet, and it just takes up so much, like, shelf space. Sell like, your I... DVDs, Liam. Well, this is, a, this is a step one in doing it, right? I feel like I'm this starting to... This isn't DVDs. Huh? This isn't DVDs, though. Yeah, because all of the special editions one are Blu-rays of The Walking Dead, different yeah, if you're seasons. Gonna, if you're going to sell things, the thing to sell would be the non-special edition DVDs. But this is the thing that I'm saying. I feel like I'm starting to grow out of the, like, statues and all that sort of stuff. You're just trying to pretend because Cat's grown out of comic books. We had this discussion, I think, before the episode started. But Liam's just trying to pretend like he's a grown-up now. And the only way he knows how is to be like, I'm going to sell my models. <laughs> I'm going to keep just, I, the, I'm keep the 4,000 DVDs. <laughs> But the models are gone. <laughs> the other thing I'm, I'm a, thinking... I'm a big boy now. The other thing is I'm thinking of stopping buying steelbooks. Because, right, yeah, some of them, some of them, perfect, right? They come in these, like, cardboard, like, proper sleeves that they slot into. Yep. And it's perfect. Others come with, like, bits of paper that are, like, glued to them. And to get, like, the thing open, you have to peel the paper off of, like, the top of it or whatever, and then you can open it. Oh, that's it. fucking horrible. Yeah, it's just, it's so much faff. And then being careful with it so you don't rip the paper and all this sort of shit. Like, packing these all up has just been a nightmare. So, I, this is also partly why I want to sell the statues, is because packing them, the thought of unpacking them to then at some point have to pack them again, I'm kind of thinking I would rather just sell it. So it's just laziness, it's not adulthood. <laughs> so I've been to the cinema a few times. <laughs> Yeah, this is time for that part of the show. Liam's yeah. been to the cinema and here are the spoiler-free reviews of the films that he's seen at the cinema when he should have been packing. Yeah. First one I saw... Because bear in mind, we recorded maybe like just over a week ago? Yeah, yeah. So I've seen three films at the cinema since we last recorded. Yeah, too many. You should have been packing. Oh, oh yeah. just very quickly. Sorry, just super quickly. Um, listeners, Liam did just say three films. Uh, he's gonna what he's trying to do this episode is he's trying to fit slot four things in. So I'm gonna cut yeah. one of these out. So you're you're only gonna hear two of these. Just to let you know. That's why. Well, I've just no, bear in mind. I've always told Liam this, but he's trying anyway. So that's why I've you're got about three to hear films two. and one Netflix thing. Yep, that's too many. So one of these it's, things is going. This not, I don't know which none. one yet. It's very exciting. Um, the thing is, I think you're gonna want to hear about all of them. Yeah, and I will because you're about to tell me them. But the well, how, one. how about this? The one that you're less interested in, say to me at the beginning, I'm not interested, and I'll just do it very quickly. Okay, okay, that works. Yeah, I get one veto, but it's just a you very quickly yeah. say it. All right, yeah. all right, that works. So the first one I went to see was I'm not interested. Well, I have to say it first because <laughs> I think you might be interested in this one. Okay, no, I'm joking. Um, I went to see First Man. Yep. Yep. Yep, so... The Neil Armstrong... Biopic, starring Ryan yeah. Gosling, directed by Damien Chazelle. Why do why do we know that name, Ellie? Because he directed... 
Yeah. A film. La La we've Land. Seen. That film. Yeah. That we've seen. And also, have you seen Whiplash? Yeah. Yeah, he directed that as well. So are they, they're both very musical. They are. And one Is of this the, a musical? No. One of the greatest disappointments of First Man, because both Whiplash and La La Land are very heavily about jazz. Yeah. And I'm gutted. I did a tweet saying this, that First Man wasn't about Neil Armstrong bringing jazz to the moon. Which would have been a good film. It would have been amazing. It would have been so good. Um, so, for me, the film that most obviously compares to is Apollo 13. Yep. Which is one of my favourite films. Like, I, It's fantastic. I saw First Man in IMAX, that's worth saying. And I think if you're going to see it, IMAX is the way to do it. Because the way they filmed certain scenes, like... Um, like the rockets like blasting off and stuff they'll yeah. put the camera in like the cockpit and then you'll have like all of the sounds going on around and yeah like it's worth it for imax not for the visuals but for the audio yeah because imax audio is like incredible exactly um kind of similar to dunkirk in that respect i'd say yeah which i think we both were like yeah go see this in imax yeah, yeah. um ryan gosling's good there were moments in the film where i was just a bit Bored. It's, it's, I think the problem is we all know how it ends. They get to the moon. They discover the aliens. The aliens chase them away. Yeah, they yeah. have. They have the you know one small step, all that sort of thing. So yeah. it is interesting seeing the journey, getting there, and like I was saying to cut afterwards. My problem with it, and I don't know if this is a problem that's going to carry with other people, but for me, a while back at a film we saw, they had a little um, intro with Ryan Gosling where he was saying like, oh, go book your tickets for, for First Man now. Uh, it's about this story. And it's like, did you know the technology that it took them to get to the moon back then is more technology than you have in your iPhone now? Yeah. That fact to me is fascinating, but there's no way of doing a film that kind of allows you to do that comparison when it's set in that time yeah. period before iPhones like, exist. Like every every single scene in First Man is Ryan Gosling looking at the camera and going, oh, so you're saying that this technology here is nothing compared to what we'll have in the future, yeah, sir. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. <laughs> so there's no way of doing it without like some contextualising way. Yeah. But So for me, it's just frustrating because that's the, the fact that I'm most interested in. But how do you convey that? Yeah, yeah. Um, the cast are all amazing, like the support cast and everything. Um, I honestly, it's it's the sort of film I was so looking forward to, and it was just so disappointing that there were like stretches in it where I was a bit like, oh, this is kind of boring now. I think the problem with that kind of film, like I love, I love those sort of films a lot. Yeah. But I always, I don't know, I struggle with those films where it's based on real life like like that not like a bullshit uh, yeah. science not science like a ghost one where it's like this is a true story and you're like yeah. mm, it's not yeah, when exactly. it's something like this where you're like this is a true story and it's like I, I don't want to be dark but like the ones that go wrong yeah. they make interesting stories because what happens is this like really dramatic thing and like them getting to the moon is obviously a very dramatic like holy shit hu- the first time humans left earth yeah but I don't know it doesn't have that same feel of cinema cinema it doesn't well, it, it doesn't have that dramatic tension either yeah yeah because you're not sitting there being like oh fuck are they gonna make goes, it is this the point where it all goes wrong yeah you're just yeah. like yeah because like my favorite bit in apollo 13 right is when it's all gone wrong and they're down in like what's it called like the the place on earth the command center what's it called <laughs> mission control mission control, mission control that's control? it yeah they're down the place, there earth <laughs> They're down there and they've got like a box. They tip it out and they're like, right, this is the only thing they have on the ship. Yeah. We have to figure out how to solve this problem using only this. I think it was like a filter they did replacing. Yeah. And I, I, to me, that I'm, just, that's the scene that I'm like, this is so exciting. First Man didn't really have like any equipment. Like there were obviously, because it, it shows you the whole like process leading up to going to the moon and there were obviously bits that went wrong leading up to it. Yeah. But it just... I don't know. Especially coming off with something like Whiplash and La La Land. Maybe my expectations were too high as well. Possibly. Uh, but as it is, for me, it's just a three out of five. Fair enough. 